Welcome to the Flexum Training Series. This series of videos will offer you technical training on how to use different products and perform various functions with Flexum's line of clamp-on ultrasonic flow meters. Today you'll be watching video number four, which will teach you how to install Flexum's transducers on a pipe. Other videos you might be interested in watching are numbers one, two, or three, which explain how to program different types of flow transmitters and video number six or eight which explain how to terminate transducer extension cables and how to install our permalock tracks on a pipe. But before we begin, I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about what we'll be covering. We're going to start by talking to you about how to pick the best location for your specific flow application. We'll talk about what types of flow obstructions to avoid, such as pumps and valves. We'll move on to how to prepare the pipe for transducer mounting installing the first transducer on the pipe, programming the meter to find the correct distance to place the second transducer at, and how to go about actually installing the second transducer correctly. In picking a location to mount your transducers, the first and most important thing to keep in mind is not convenience of mounting, although always desirable, but determining where in your system the most stable and consistent flow can be found. In order to get the most accurate measurement, we must find the best location for a transducer placement. Like all ultrasonic meters, Flexum recommends a minimum of 10 free diameters upstream and 5 free diameters downstream of any obstruction, such as elbows or valves. Flexum meters can and are oftentimes mounted in the field under less than ideal conditions and do tolerate these conditions better than any ultrasonic meter available. In addition, there are several things we can do at the transmitter to help alleviate error that would otherwise accompany non-ideal condition installations. Please speak to a Flexum representative for more information on what we can do in these situations. However, the best and most accurate measurement will be obtained by installing on the longest straight run of pipe available. When you find the longest straight run of pipe on the line you'd like to measure, the best place to mount is two-thirds the distance downstream from the last bend. For example, if we had flow going from left to right on an 18 foot run of pipe, we would mount our transducers with 12 feet of pipe to our left and 6 feet to our right. This is the location that's most likely to have the best and most consistent flow profile. Even if we don't have a good long straight run available, we can and do often get good measurement results. However, there are some flow obstructions we truly need to avoid to obtain good measurements. Even if we have straight runs before and after, we must avoid mounting near pumps. On the suction side, most types of pumps will cause a flattening of the flow profile which will greatly reduce the measured flow. As well, any pump under the right conditions will cavitate, causing bubbles that propagate well downstream of the pump's discharge. For this reason, it is best to stay as far from a pump as is reasonably possible. As well, Try to mount transducers in non-ideal conditions as far downstream of flow restrictions such as downsizes in a line or partially closed valves and especially orifice plates as you're able to. This will go a long way towards giving you good results and accurate measurements with your Flexum meter. Now that we've decided where to best mount our transducers, it's time to get to business. The first thing we need to do is ensure a good acoustic coupling to the pipe so we need to perform some pipe preparation. All this involves is getting a good smooth surface against which we will mount our transducers. We don't need to strip off all paint and go down to the bare metal, although if you do this, nothing will be hurt. We simply need to sand off enough paint that the surface where the transducers will be mounted is smooth to the touch. Flexum recommends using around 100 or 120 grit sandpaper for most paints. Steel wool works just fine as well. As long as the finish is smooth to the touch, it doesn't matter how you accomplish this. Now we can mount our first transducer. We don't want to mount both transducers at this point, because we don't know yet how far apart to put them. So let's go ahead and mount the first transducer to the pipe. We have several different mounting options available. For permanent installations, we have a permalock track, which is especially recommended to protect transducers from the elements. Even though all flex and transducers have stainless steel housings, the permalock tracks provide an added means of protection for your valuable instrumentation. For temporary mounting, we have several different sizes of magnetic mounts. And for indoor applications, permanent or temporary, we can use flex and mounting straps. 
We're going to use these for our demonstration. Place a small amount of coupling gel on the head of the transducer. A quarter inch bead down the center is perfectly fine. We want to be careful not to use so much that we have lots of acoustic coupling gel oozing out the sides when we put the transducer on the pipe, or we might inadvertently lose some of our signal. We highly recommend using our permanent coupling pads. Next, we put the transducer on the pipe. If we think of the cross section of our pipe as a clock, we want to avoid mounting the transducers at 12 or 6 o'clock. If we mount at 9 or 3, we can see the best picture of flow inside the line. If we mount at 12 or 6, we run the risk of completely losing signal if we get solids running along the bottom of the pipe, or bubbles, or in trained air, mount the first transducer on the pipe at around 10 o'clock, and strap it down. Now that we have our first transducer mounted, we go to the meter and program in all the necessary pipe parameters. When we get to the signal strength screen, we are given a recommended distance to mount our transducers at for our particular application. For details of how to program flex and flow transmitters, please watch videos 1, 2, or 3. Now that we have the distance to mount our second transducer at, we can go back to the pipe. All distances for flexometers are given as distances from one transducer face to the other. If we butted the heads of two transducers to each other, we would call a zero inches separation. The distance we are given by our meter is a recommendation. We do not need to install at the exact distance. But we do need to choose a distance as close to what the meter has recommended as we can get. Usually within plus or minus quarter inches fine. Make sure you measure the distance accurately. No meter can be any more accurate than the information you put into it. So whatever the distance is that we choose, we need to tell the meter exactly what that is. Place the second transducer on the pipe and use the mounting strap to hold it in place. That's all there is to it. Within the first few times of mounting our transducers, you'll be a pro. Today we've covered the basics of how to install Flexum's line of clamp-on ultrasonic transducers on a pipe. We've seen how to pick a good measurement location and which type of situations and obstructions to avoid. We've talked about how to prepare a pipe for transducer installation and how to configure the meter ensuring proper transducer placement. And lastly, we've talked about how to physically install the transducers on a pipe. Thank you for spending some time with us today. All of us here at Flexum look forward to hearing how we can help you achieve all of your measurement goals for your facility.